interest rate setting arm of the Federal Reserve took its most aggressive action on interest rates since 1994. The Fed's Open Market Committee today approving a three-quarters of a percent increase in short-term rates. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell speaking after the meeting, saying the central bank remains committed to fighting inflation. We at the Fed understand the hardship that high inflation is causing. We're strongly committed to bringing inflation back down, and we're moving expeditiously to do so. We have both the tools we need and the resolve that it will take to restore price stability on behalf of American families and businesses. The increase in the Fed's fund rate, while hopefully reining in rising prices, will boost borrowing costs, including mortgage rates and rates tied to credit cards. The decision was not unanimous. One Fed policymaker, Kansas City Fed President Esther George, preferring a smaller half a point increase. A top Ukrainian official says his country is struggling on the battlefield because it's outgunned by Russian artillery fire at a rate of at least 10 to 1. NPR's Greg Myri explains Ukraine is making an urgent appeal for more heavy weapons. The Ukrainian official, Mihailo Podolyak, is a senior advisor to President Volodymyr Zelensky. In an interview with NPR, Podolyak described the Russian military advantage through an interpreter. Again, the math is clear. We will need parity of, we- of weapons if we're going to be effective in any sort of counteroffensive. He said Ukraine's needs include 1,000 howitzers and 500 tanks. NATO defense ministers meeting in Brussels are expected to announce more military help, though not on that scale. Podoyak told NPR, quote, if you get anything from this interview, it's weapons, weapons, weapons. Greg Myrie, NPR News. Kiev. Georgia Republican Congressman Barry Loudermilk led a tour of the U.S. Capitol complex the day before the January 6th insurrection. Sam Greenglass of member station WABE reports newly released surveillance footage shows Loudermilk guiding visitors as they took photos of security desks, hallways, and tunnels leading to the Capitol. Loudermilk previously said he hadn't led any tours of the Capitol the day before the riot. But footage released by the Congressional Committee investigating January 6th shows Loudermilk taking visitors through House office buildings that can to the Capitol. The committee says one person on the tour marched toward the Capitol on January 6th, threatening Democratic members of Congress. We're coming in like white on rice for Pelosi, Nadler, <laughs> Schumer. We're coming to take you out. Loudermilk emphasized the Capitol Police's judgment earlier this week that the tour was innocuous. The congressman has declined to answer questions from the January 6th committee. For NPR News, I'm Sam Greenglass in Atlanta. Stocks rallied on Wall Street today. The Dow up 303 points. The floodwaters that ravaged parts of Yellowstone National Park are now making their way through Montana's biggest city. The high water flooding farms and ranches there and forcing the shutdown of a major water treatment plant. The Yellowstone River hit its highest level in nearly a century as it traveled through Billings, home to 110,000 people, reaching 16 feet. An environmental group now says it plans to sue the Biden administration, failing to protect 12 endangered coral species. NPR's Greg Allen reports the federal government is considering setting aside more than 6,000 square miles of protected habitat for coral. Coral species are on the decline worldwide because of pollution, overfishing, development, and the effects of climate change. Two years ago, in response to a lawsuit, the National Marine Fisheries Service proposed designating areas in the Caribbean and the Pacific as critical habitat for coral. Since then, the Center for Biological Diversity says the agency has violated the Endangered Species Act by not finalizing the critical habitat designation with in a year as required by law. The group says despite the dire situation for corals, the Federal Fisheries Agency has, quote, sat idle on finalizing one of the most effective conservation measures available, designating critical habitat. Greg Allen, NPR News, Miami. Internet Explorer, which has been around since 1995, is having its last hurrah, software maker Microsoft announcing. 27 years after its launch, the once dominant Internet browser will no longer be supported by the company. The browser's share of the market peaked in the early 2000s at 90 percent, but has faded as consumers have found faster alternatives. Google Chrome dominates with 65 percent of the market currently.
Hi, thank you for watching. I hope the videos are useful for you. Please subscribe to my channel using the button below.